everybody. Welcome to our Sunlight Newbies workshop. Amber, you look amazing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> just, just to start off, Sunny told me I was welcome to look holiday-ish. So here I am. <laughs> as much holiday as possible. Yes, this is amazing. I love it. I've, I've been here laughing since I saw you come on. You make a great Santa Claus. I'll take, um, I'll take off the beard so they can at least take us seriously today. Exactly. So back, back with the hat. There we go. That is great. So right. <laughs> for those of you just joining us, Amber is one of your Sunlight mentors, and I'm Sunny. I'm Sunlight's community manager. But first and foremost, we are both Sunlight moms, and we are excited to talk to our newbies today about what homeschooling during a busy holiday season can be like. You know, you might see on Pinterest or Instagram all these amazingly beautiful ideas of here's how you homeschool through the holidays, but a lot of that can be very overwhelming. This event is coming to you live, so please drop your questions or comments in the chat, and Amber and I would love to answer them for you or interact with you. So yeah, please make sure you do that. Um, Amber, let's go ahead and jump right in. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your approach is to homeschooling during the holidays? Oh my goodness. I I When Sunny asked me to help do this, I thought it was so funny. Uh, I don't know that I've ever heard it called holiday school before, but I had started seeing posts from friends talking about holiday school, this and that. And I was like, oh, that must be what we call it now. <laughs> I'm just kind of laughing at because I've been doing this long enough that I don't think that was a thing. Um, so let's see. At my home, we always have an advent calendar. So I think when my oldest was about eight um, someone gifted me an advent calendar and each day you add a piece of the Christmas nativity, right? So we would read through and each day we would hit something. So today we add a donkey and a day we add Mary and a day we add Joseph and it's, and it's, was really fun. So we started doing that. We do that. So every day leading up to Christmas in the morning, um, and of course, there are the random, like, let's cancel school today and have a little Christmas party with friends, things like that. But Sunny, I would just love to say, this can be really overwhelming. And especially if you're a mom with FOMO, uh, seeing all of those posts, I even did some looking up this week, like, okay, let's just pretend I'm starting. And I Googled holiday school with homeschooling. And I... I just cannot believe the amount of ideas and resources out there. So there's there's something if you just want to ditch school for the month and do something every day. But I think if it were me, I would feel a little overwhelmed. Absolutely. I agree. Um, for those of you that haven't noticed, I, I share it frequently in the app. I am not a craftsy mom. I don't like to bake, all that like tedious stuff. That's not fun for me. That's part of the reason I chose Sunlight so that I didn't have to create my own homeschool curriculum. And so at Christmas time, I agree with you, Amber, when all of these awesome ideas came up or people started sharing what they were doing online, I was like, oh, am I supposed to be doing all of this? You know, are we creating Christmas memories without all of these things? Or what am I supposed to do? Because I don't like that stuff anyway. Um, and so... Yeah. It's been interesting in our house because we really kind of stick with our regular schoolwork. I'm not the mom that takes a month off. Um, there are many moms who do. And if that is something you're doing, do not feel bad about that. Absolutely. You can take time off around the holidays. Um, but for me, I find my year goes better if I just hammer away at the curriculum until we hit a true Christmas break, usually the week or two before Christmas. Um, but I did start incorporating in Sunlight's Advent Kits last year. And that's been a great way if you're like me and you don't want to create your own crafts or you don't want to bake, everything's already planned. Uh, Sheila, one of our other mentors, created those and they are so fun and they still include reading, um, but they can be done in short little snippets. So we do that in the evening instead of as part of our school but we'll light our candles before bed, we'll read, and then usually we save crafts and baking for the weekend. And so that's something fun that we started incorporating this year. Yeah, I love I love that we that Sunlight came up with the Advent idea to, to have a unit study like that. And I agree, if my children were younger and I had that option, 
I love that you're saying you do it in the evening because I think sometimes we just assume we have to do everything in the morning or get it done during the day or, or whatever. And, and that's not true at all. Um, I know one thing we've incorporated every December, this is sunlight's fault. Um, <laughs> one year when we read the best Christmas pageant ever, mm -hmm. all of my children didn't matter their age were listening into that and they loved it. And I'm the mom with a little drama in my background. So I do all voices and I make it really fun. Well, even my older adult kids come home and say, oh no, did you already read it? So that has been like every year at some point in December, I read aloud. And actually this year I asked the kids who were still home, do you got, you want me to divide it up and we can make it kind of like a script and read it together? And they said, uh-uh, you just read it. <laughs> so I'll get to read that um, maybe someday to grandchildren too, who knows? But I, I love that that's been a really fun just something simple that we do that doesn't involve complete chaos to our whole school curriculum. Now, Sunny, one thing that you mentioned, um, and I was thinking about this, we lived in South America one year. And so December is summer break uh, mm -hmm. for some of our sunlighters. And so that's kind of nice because <laughs> you're going to take off this whole month anyway, because it's summer. So some of you, uh, I know we have customers all over South America, so that, that kind of works. You've got your summer break and Christmas all rolled into one, so you can do lots of fun stuff. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and I have seen that, that a lot of our international customers, they're done with their year yep. and they won't start school back up. So yeah, that's a great point as well that we should acknowledge um, that, yeah, if you're already taking the break because it's your summer break, go for it, you know, and take that time, enjoy the holidays and do those fun things. And I think one, one other thing maybe to allay, if there are guilt feelings, I would love to hear if there are any moms watching, let us know um, how you're feeling about this. Like if you're, are you feeling guilty because you're not doing enough? Are you just having a blast because you are setting aside school and doing something else? Like what's the take? I would say one thing as I was thinking about this this week to present is um, elementary school years are really the prime years to be able to pull off something like dedicated holiday school. But once our kids get into those middle school and high school years, especially uh, don't let them talk you into getting out of school because <laughs> usually in high school, they, they can't just take off a month. Typically there's stuff to do. Now, if you've already worked that in and you say, no, we start at the beginning of very beginning of August so that we can take all of December and we go through May so that we can take off December, that's great. But for those of you who are brand new to homeschooling, that's kind of one of those things that you'll have to decide in your own mind. Um, and it's okay, you say we want December off, then you can start a little earlier or go a little later and just say, hey kids, you know what? Remember when we had that really fun month in December? Well, that means we still have to go a little further into May. That's just how it works. So it's good teaching time. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about incorporating it into the schedule. If that's something that you would like to do, or maybe this year you feel like you couldn't do that next year, you know, start school a little bit earlier, plan for that. Yeah. Um, something else that you said was that the younger kids, you know, this is the prime time for mm -hmm. them. Um, but of course, with younger kids, you've got bigger messes if you're yes. trying to bake and craft or, you know, they don't have quite the same attention span. Um, I love what you said about your family has taken on the best Christmas pageant ever as a tradition. What are some fun ways like that, you know, through reading to your kids that maybe you can incorporate some fun Christmassy things that aren't as messy or maybe don't take as much time yeah, I think I think um, one thing when my kids were little, I had a basket of books. So we would build that up over the years. Um, every year I would buy each of them a book that had to do something with Christmas. So, you know, it might be a board book for the littlest one and then something a little meatier for like a, a little picture book that's kind of like a chapter, not quite a chapter. You understand. So so when they're um, about mm, fourth grade and under. Every year I would buy a book. Of course, that couldn't keep going. But now we have this little treasure of Christmas books that I put in a basket and would have it sitting out. And the kids love that or puzzles. So when my um, when Julia was little, we had so many books that we bought her a puzzle. And it was one of those big floor puzzles. 
that has the nativity scene, just like 20 pieces or whatever. And so in the mornings when the kids had to do a little bit of school, she could be off rummaging through that Christmas book box and doing a puzzle on the floor. And all the kids kind of got into that. So that's kind of a little way. It's not a mess. It's just books. Um, also, I invested in a Playmobil nativity set and a little people nativity set. So when the kids were under five, little people, and when they got a little older and I thought they could handle it, a Playmobil nativity, it's really sweet. Um, in our house, though, you have to play with it right where it is. You're not allowed to drag pieces all over because I didn't want to lose baby Jesus. Um, <laughs> so that's that's what. And the first year we lost baby Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we found him in time for Christmas. But the Playmobil, you know, they're teeny. Um, so so that's that's another thing. It's just like. <laughs> It's not messy. And if we were going to do messy, like let's have a couple friends over and build gingerbread houses. Ugh, I just had to steal myself for that. Please, <laughs> please, those of you newbies out there, do not picture that all homeschoolers are like, woo, into that. I, like Sunny, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a control freak with that stuff. And so, yes, I set up, I set up a place at the table. We had a, you know, all the stuff out. And when we were done, it was all away. I, Yeah. That's a that's a sacrifice for me to to make that kind of a memory happen for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very much that way, too, where, yeah, baking to me is just some I love to cook meals, but I do not like to bake at all because flour yeah. is everywhere. Um, but my yeah. daughter, who is now 13, she loves to bake. So this yeah. year. She was like, I want to make all the Christmas cookies. And I was like, perfect. Here's yes. the cookies. So oh. fun. <laughs> you know, the other thing along with books, something that's not messy, is um, I built kind of a library of Christmas movies over the years, too. So mm -hmm. we have a little, you know, section of our shelf that's just dedicated to some Christmas DVDs. Now everything's digital. I don't even know how you all do that. Do that. But um, so we have certain movies that we kind of go back to. And so... In our house, we don't usually watch TV a lot during the week of school. So at Christmas time, to get to watch a movie every couple of days, a Christmas movie in the late afternoon, that's a really special treat for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And we, we're the same way. We have the same ones that we come back to every mm -hmm. year. And that's something, yeah, that's easy to do in the evening, the weekend, you know, yep. randomly throughout the week. Like you said, I know this Sunday we were decorating. We've been out of town. So we were just now decorating for Christmas this past weekend. And we had white Christmas playing in the background because that's yes. one, you know, we watch every year and we sing along to the songs and all of that. So, yeah, I think you kind of gradually build up those traditions without even realizing it as you do yep. things year after year. Um, and then again, yeah, reading Sunlight, like you said, they have the great or the best Christmas pageant ever and a ton of other Christmas books kind of woven in through yes. several of their programs and included is like optional reading for Advent. So you can find that list online. We actually just posted a new blog too about like our 11 recommendations for Christmas books. Yes. Uh, so that if you're looking to add a story in, um, I love what you said about puzzles. We actually found an Advent puzzle this year where nice. you open a new part of the puzzle each day leading okay. up to this. And so, yeah, there's there's so many fun things like that, like you said, that, that don't take a lot of planning on your part as mom, but then they're still fun. Um, but I know something else that I have always tried with my kids is I, I fight entitlement at every turn. I do not want my kids to be spoiled or think it's all about them. And especially at Christmas time when it's, oh, I want this for Christmas. I want this for Christmas. So what are some good ways um, to teach your kids the real reason we celebrate Christmas? And then also maybe to fight some of that entitlement or encourage them to give to others. What do you think for that? Yeah, I think, um, well, one, maybe one way of fighting some entitlement, which, you know, Sunny, that's such a, that's such a tricky one, because I think even as adults, we really fall into that trap too, you know, so that's just a little bit of a fight against human nature, but maybe one thing that helps is the thank you note process, mm -hmm. right? So every gift gets a thank you note. Um, my husband grew up in a family where most of the fam grandparents were far away, so they would get things in the mail. And the 
parents uh, said, you are not allowed to open another present until you've written a thank you note for this one. So grandma and grandpa sent a present one day and then aunt and uncle sent a present the next day. That one doesn't get opened because you haven't written a thank you mm -hmm. note to grandma. So anyway, there's there's some of that, right? Where you say, um, now we don't make our kids write us, the parents, thank you notes for the gifts we give them. But I just think that idea of noticing and recognizing when someone's given you a gift to write a thank you note. And again, that can be a, a nice school lesson too, right? Because you're going to say best handwriting and, and let me read it over. So my kids would write a note on scrap paper and then I would read it and do some corrections and then let them copy it and, and mail it off. And so you're teaching, you know, you don't need a special lesson about how to address an envelope because you're doing it in a homeschool. Anyway, um, I think thank you notes can help with entitlement. Um, in our home, different years. And again, I wouldn't say there's one thing we always do for this, but we try to come up with a Christmas gift for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what could we give? Uh, do we have a family in our sphere of influence locally who needs encouragement or needs some help? Can we do a project for them? Can we buy them something? Um, and then sometimes we can't think of someone in our general sphere that needs immediate help. Is there someone globally, Angel Tree Christmas, things like that, that we give to and as as a whole family say, let's let's give. Um, I think mom and dad, it's important for us to model that. So it's not just like, hey, kids, what are, what can I take out of your piggy bank? But um, a little bit of um, what what dad and I are going to do. Right. So Scott sometimes will sit down and say to the kids, you know what? We had a problem with the van. It was supposed to cost us $300 to fix it. It only cost $150. So I'm going to take the $150 that I didn't know we were going to save, and let's put that towards something for Jesus. So little things like that, I think, I don't know if that completely answers your question, but that's a little bit how we've tried to tackle it. Yeah, no, I think those are all great ideas. Um, you mentioned like Angel Tree. A lot of times like our church takes two or three things like that or, yes. you know, food and clothing drives, things like that. And so that's something that we've always liked to do as a family when our kids are young, explaining, you know, you are asking us all these things you want for Christmas, but you don't realize there's people that need basic necessities. And so we're going to help, you know, provide that for them through these different service projects. So that's kind of the way... We like to do it in our house, but yeah. And I love what you said about thank you notes. I grew up with a Southern mother who thank you notes were her thing. And she can tell you who forgot to send her one from 25 years ago. Oh, no. and <laughs> as a child, we very much had that. Nope, mm -hmm. okay, you need to send thank yeah. you notes. And I think that's kind of a, a dying art that people don't send handwritten anything anymore. Yeah. So but just, just that, just fostering that idea of, um, okay, this gift didn't just pop into under the tree. You know, someone thought about you. Someone took their time or took spent their money because they were thinking of you. And well, of course they're thinking of me. You know, that's that's kind of but and again, that's that's a growth thing. I don't think we punish children for that, especially, you know, we're all it, life is about us a lot of times, right? And it's hard to see and they'll get there. They'll grow. So I guess that's what I see <laughs> as we model that and and present that. Um I, I had another thought. I thought this was so good. Of course, I haven't ever done it, but I think it's amazing. Um, we knew a missionary family once that did the 12 days of Christmas. So what they did for the 12 days before Christmas, they came up with one family for each day that they could bless. And so they just, you know, whether it was taking a plate of cookies or going to do yard work or doing something, they tried to think of 12 people that they could bless. And each day they would go and do some little thing for those 12 people. I think that's amazing. I've not incorporated that, but we also have family in California. So there are every other year we end up traveling for Christmas. It just kind of messes with my mind. But anyway, um, <laughs> but I think that's, that's a really cool idea. Um, Sunny, another thing is, and again, depending on how young your children are, this can be hard to incorporate if they're older. But we have set expectations very low for Christmas. So in our home, we started off when our kids were little, something they need, something they want. There were four categories that we came up with. And so we tried to buy them a gift for each of those categories. So all of our kids, there were about four, four or five presents under the tree. 
and then stockings. So that was fun. But it's been kind of amazing as the years go by to see how content they are with what we get them and what they ask for isn't outrageous because they know that's just not what we do. They're not going to find a convertible outside with a bow on it, you know, or the brand, the newest iPhone. Cause we, we can't do, we have five children. We can't spend a $500 on each of them, you know? So coming up with a budget, but it's been cool to watch over the years, how, how excited they are to watch each other open. And um, I'm just really thankful from the beginning that, that it was more like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a, a great point that when you start with them, when they're younger, they, they grow up with kind of understanding what the expectation is and that Christmas is not just about what you receive. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. Reading to them, doing Advent, you know, reading out of the Bible, the Christmas story. I know Luke is a popular one in the month of December because you can read one chapter a day and read the entire book by Christmas yeah. Eve. Um, there's 24 chapters in Luke. And so doing things like that, I think, yeah, from an early age does help your kids kind of develop that over time, like you said. Um, we actually have a comment, let's see, from a few people on here. Let's see, Sheila said she's watching this while making cookie dough and making a huge mess, and it's just her. She <laughs> does not have ki young kids anymore, and she's still baking. So if that is something you love, absolutely do it. That's mm -hmm. just not us, apparently, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do it once in a while. I like to do it like on a weekend, like you said, but I probably wouldn't like give up school unless it's the week right before Christmas. Then maybe we say, okay, let's, let's do this. Um, yeah. And I, I know another thing we, we got a recipe for challah bread one year and that was really fun to talk about that Jewish tradition with challah. And of course I put chocolate chips in challah bread instead of raisins. <laughs> and we like it a lot better like that. But that's that's a really fun thing. And actually, I was just saying to Julia, we should make challah bread. Yeah. So we'll probably do that soon. Well, and I love a few things you've said to remind me that as homeschool moms, I think we're good at fostering natural learning all the time, right? Trying yeah. new traditions and, you know, learning about the history of something or whatever it may be, because yes. we're kind of used to to that. And I think if you're brand new to homeschooling and that feels unnatural right now, the longer you do it. I mean, now anywhere I go, I'm like, wow, look at the history of this or let's learn this or, you know, and it, it just becomes more instinctive. So I love what you said there about trying other traditions too. Um, let's see. It looks like December Storm says we're reading the best Christmas pageant ever right now. In the first chapter, my eighth grader laughed and said she was not expecting this story to go this way. She's enjoying it. And we are finishing the last chapter tomorrow. So, yeah, that's a great one. That was in, I want to say it's level H. Um I may be yeah. wrong. I think, um, I think it might be G. Or maybe G. Yeah. Maybe it's G. Yeah. And um, also, I loved that book because I think by the end, um, I was, I get teary every time because it's just so sweet and so precious. Um, you know, another thing we do, Sunny, which I think um, especially young moms would love, I get a bare branch and we hang it someplace on the wall. Like I just wrap ribbon around and hang it. And then we find little toys or things that remind us about Jesus at Christmas. So maybe we make a little, I made a little shepherd's crook out of pipe cleaner, just whatever, a little angel, something. And we hang those ornaments off that branch. And that all kind of tells a story about Jesus, a little bundle of hay, a little piece of white cloth, like anything, a little toy donkey, anything that reminds you of Jesus or his names, and you just hang them randomly from this bare branch, like a Jesus branch. I know some people talk about Jesse branch, but that was something we pulled out that bare branch at Christmas. And then again at Easter, and it really helped my kids tie together um, those two events because several of the or things that we would use for Christmas translated to something from Easter also. It's kind of cool. Yeah, very true. I, I love that. And you mentioned kind of making ornaments. That's a great craft if you're not super craftsy or like you said, making them like tie them into the Christmas and Easter stories. Um, and that's something too that we like to do. My kids have made ornaments, usually one or two ornaments every, I love that mug. <laughs> one or two uh, ornaments every Christmas year. And it's been really fun. We actually have like our I don't want to say designer because it's definitely not, but our our 
formal decorated tree in one room, but we have a tree that's full of all the kids' ornaments that they've made over the years um, in another room. And so that's something, that's you fun. know, you can find easy templates online. You can make some with our Advent studies or, you know, create your own. But having your kids make ornaments over time, it's really fun to see you know, how they've grown. I love photo ornaments too, for the same reason, you know, you have them when they're little all the way up till they're older. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another fun thing to, to throw in there too. Um, before we segue on to another topic though, is there anything else as far as traditions, finding traditions, creating traditions, anything like that, that you want to drop in? Um, I guess maybe one thing I would just say is that we don't have to be married to these traditions, right? Mm -hmm. So I think some of us, um, maybe grieve when a tradition can't happen. And we're so set on forcing a tradition that we suck the joy and the life out of everything uh, for our family. Um, so just because something has always been a certain way doesn't mean it always has to be that way. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. for years, we started off our day reading the story of Advent and, and or whatever the, I mean, the story and adding a piece to our calendar. Well, now the reality is I have a senior in high school and a seventh grader. Um, so the way we do that, it kind of looks a little different and it doesn't feel quite the same. Does that make sense? And I am I know that I have to come to terms with that. Like some things are gonna change. I don't have my box of books out for Christmas this year. It They're, they're past that age. So if we have little people come over, maybe I'll pull it out. But um, it's just, so I think, that other part of some of our moms right now are probably feeling like, wow, Christmas doesn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay. It's okay. You can, you can make new memories. You can try new things. It doesn't have to be the same way it's always been. Maybe something does need to change up just to help you feel fresh about things. Um, and, and at the end of the day, Jesus came to earth. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's the big deal. And sometimes we can easily get caught in that trap of I have to make it this way and it has to be special. Sometimes our kids probably are like, could we just stop? Mom's so mean, <laughs> whatever, because we're trying so hard to force it. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point, too. Yeah. If it's not fun, if it's super stressful, you know, kind of reevaluate that. And yeah. is this something that I even need to be doing? And I think that was something that um, during the pandemic, my whole mindset shifted towards things mm -hmm. because I've always been a very type A perfectionist. If somebody says you should do this because it's good for you. I would, if somebody recommended I read something, I would struggle through a book I hated because they recommended it. And it was very much like, I have to do this, right? Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, I realized that the only person putting those expectations on myself was me mm -hmm. and that no one else cared what I thought in my mind that I had to finish or I had to do. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about expectations and mm -hmm. You know, determining, I think we have this whole thought in our mind that, oh, my my kids won't have a magical Christmas or they won't have good childhood memories if I don't do all these things. And I think a lot of that is pressure we put on ourselves. So what do you say to that? How do you decide what you do or don't do? That's so hard. Um, I'll just say from the beginning, when my kids were very small, I really, really wanted uh, the the actual meaning of Christmas to be very obvious to my kids. So we weren't big. I mean, I, I know I've got a Santa hat on here and there's a Santa hat on my tree. And that's actually because um, I did, I don't have a, I don't have a topper for this tree. <laughs> Someone gave us this tree and it has lights in it. So I just want to point this out really fast that there's nothing on my tree. <laughs> because last year we had a cat for the first time at Christmas and the cat climbed into the tree. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on the ornaments. Sure enough, the cat climbed in the tree, and he's doing it again this year. Okay. Which, so I'm like, you know what? So if you, if you take the time to take a picture, and but you're not gonna see anything. I'm, even though I have all these ornaments, I love. So speaking of this, like, okay, but that's not what Christmas is about, right? So for now, the tree is plain. Um, but wanting Christmas to be about what it really is about, about Christ, I didn't want that to get lost. So the Jesus branch, the books about the, the nativity, th things like that. Um, and what is the point of traditions anyway? And what is the point of celebrating this? I do think 
So there are some people that go the opposite way and say, we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. We're not going to decorate. We're not going to do it. We can come up with all sorts of things, why this is pagan and, and all sorts of stuff. I know that there are some people who sincerely feel that way about Christmas and they don't do anything. Um, I think it's appropriate and wonderful to have times of the year and traditions that our kids can um, can have. It's, it's cultural. It's part of kind of who we are. Um, I think even in the Old Testament, all the feasts and all the certain things that God had the children do as times of remembrance, right? So I think this, this time, yes, we remember that Jesus came to earth all the time, every time we talk about the gospel. But now we take one time of the year to especially remember that Jesus came in the flesh. Um, and of course, we're going to be distracted because the world is going to, right? It's there. And, and um, there is someone out there who doesn't want us really thinking about what Christmas is all about. So I think constantly bringing it back and saying, okay, um, God, how can I make this a meaningful time as a family and have traditions and have things that make it's, it's unique to us. Right. And it, that's good. And that's healthy. And that's a rhythm that children get to have. So um, I feel like I'm not really answering your question well, but that, I think traditions are important and, and they're okay and they're good. Maybe you have traditions around your own kids' birthdays, certain things we do. Everybody's birthday, we always do this thing. Well, that's unique to your family and it's fabulous and it's wonderful. And as they grow, they'll change those for their own family. So um, I think it is good to, to set this time aside and remember and have things, but yours doesn't have to look like everybody else's. Um, I yeah, well, and I think, I, was just say, I think when it comes to homeschooling, we tell people that a lot. Your homeschool will not look right. like anybody else's. So why do we think our Christmas needs to look like anybody else or anything else? That's that we right. Do? That's a great point. Yeah. And I know another thing I've tried. We've tried really hard not to make Christmas just us. Mm -hmm. So um, typically we have unless we're traveling and we're with our family far away. If we're home for Christmas, we have people in just like Thanksgiving, we want to, we want to be hospitable and have people join us. And, and um, so I think that's another thing, right? That keeps it from always being, when you're talking back to the entitlement thing, um, can, are our hearts big enough to include some others in our celebration? There are single people in your churches, um, widows, people without family who never get invited to Christmas with a family. Uh, my husband's parents once had an older woman from their church and she said she has had never spent a Christmas with a family. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? And yeah. she was the yeah. sweetest woman, but no one thought of her. Wow. And she was in her sixties. First time she had spent Christmas with a family. So I, I was just like, wow, that's, that really took me off guard. So I think there are people even that seem fine on the outside, or maybe it's a, a couple who's never been able to have children. And so if their parents are both gone, there they are, who do they have Christmas with, right? You can pull them into your family for that one day, right? Just making it a special time for them. So just ways to think about others. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. Um, yeah, and and I think oftentimes we put so much pressure on ourselves, you know, and you mentioned traveling to see family. That is something that we realized we live six hours from our closest relative and even more than that from, from most of our families. And after our first two Christmases of trying to go back home and seeing both sides of the family, it, it was causing a lot of strife and, you know, it was a lot of stress. Our kids were very young at the time. And so we said, okay, we're not going to do this. We will come see you guys at a different time of the year, multiple times a year, but not at Christmas. Yeah. And that did wonders. And our house, you know, and so now it really is typically just the four of us on Christmas morning, although we do stuff with our neighbors and friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. On Christmas. Um, but, but yeah, I think that's something too. If you find that you're causing a lot, it's causing a lot of stress and hectic times. And like you said, Amber, taking your mind off what Christmas really is about, then that may be a sign too that, oh, let me kind of change some things around and see what we can do instead. Um, so yeah, we still call our families and, you sure. know, do FaceTime and that type of stuff, but that's, that's something we had to make a change, you know, a few years back. 
And now Christmas has been much more enjoyable. So, you know, and you said something earlier too about traditions change and things change. And so I think that's something too that that you have to think about too, depending on you know, how old your kids are, how old your parents are, those those types of things as well. Let's talk about a little bit about that time management piece of you know, managing all of these holiday celebrations, oftentimes there's parties and cookie exchanges and all the things. Plus, as a homeschool mom, you probably are quite busy and strapped for time anyway. You know, do you need, I feel like sometimes people freak out like, oh, I'm getting behind because I'm not in my regular routine this time of the year. What, what would you say about that? Um, well, first of all, I think um, a couple things. If you're strapped because so many people are demanding so much from you, you're allowed to say no. And I know sometimes we can put a lot of guilt, like every party my child is invited to doesn't have to be a yes, right? So we we have to really kind of go, okay. And even what you're asked to do, some of you may be asked to do many things at your church or whatever at this time of year, and you're allowed to say no. And sometimes homeschoolers get taken advantage of because people think, well, they're not in school anyway. They can, whatever. And so I, um, I think you're okay to say, you know what? We school at that time. And so can I come in the afternoon or can we are well, we're happy to help you decorate the foyer, whatever, <laughs> but we need to do it in the afternoon. So that's one thing. As far as getting behind, I mean, I think this is something we address multiple times a year, mm -hmm. uh, um, but particularly this, I will often read a couple days worth of history, or if I'm at a good spot in science, okay, let's just take three weeks off of science. So during the Christmas season, science is something that goes by the wayside first for me, because <laughs> typically I'm in a good spot by Christmas. You can kind of figure out what the halfway mark is. And if you're already to the halfway mark, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I've seen some people say how they do wait and do all the experiments, maybe on a weekend. That's a good, that's a good thing. So for me, extra reading for history. Um, math is something I don't typically forego. So mm -hmm. I figure, you know, we can take 30 minutes to get math done. And I try my best not to, un, not to not do math. Again, once we hit the week before Christmas, typically we just set things aside. That's that's time for our break, a couple weeks. But you're not going to be behind. We tell you that all the time, but that is the truth. It is okay. Learning is a process. There's not one thing. Your kindergartner, first grader, second, there's nothing they're going to learn that month of December that is crucial and is going to keep them from getting into MIT someday. So that's the other part. You've just got to take a breath and say, all right, this is this is worth it to me. We're going to set some things aside. It's OK, especially in those younger years. Just love them and enjoy them because they won't be there forever. <laughs> <It's> exactly. <laughs> yeah, they grow up away. But I mean, I know people say that all the time, but once you experience that, it's like, oh, we don't have that cuddly yeah. you know, little child anymore. And so now, you know, we're we're transitioning to a new stage of life. And so, yeah, something important, especially around the holidays to remember that. And I know we've talked about, you know, you're not behind um, maybe doing kind of a hybrid, you're still doing some school, but not taking all of it off. I know several of our families might do like math and reading every day, especially yeah. if a child's learning those skills to yes. keep them fresh, but then take out the rest of everything else, you know, that's mm -hmm. true academics. Um, so you yeah. do have some options there. And yeah, don't, don't feel guilty if what you're doing doesn't look like what somebody else is doing. Yeah. Um, we kind of alluded to it earlier when you were talking about people without families, but even people with families, a lot of times the holidays can be tough. Either mm -hmm. they've lost family members or, you know, there's something else going on in their lives that make Christmas time or the holidays in general, just really hard on them. So yeah. what suggestions would you have for handling those issues, whether you're the one going through it and you're also trying to put on, you know, the happy face for your children, or if it's somebody close to you that's going through that, um, what suggestions do you have for them? I think that's, that's really, really hard because right as an, on an individual basis, I don't know that there's one thing we could say that would cover all all things. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'll tell a story. When I was living in Maryland, I had a sweet friend who was also homeschooling. She lived up the street from me. Our kids were third grade and lower. And I was decorating for Valentine's Day. Now, all growing up, I could have cared less about Valentine's. I mean, I went to school. I went to traditional school. So we did the obligatory, you know, <laughs> Valentine's for everybody. But as an adult, I, I, we, I don't know. I just, once I got in high school, it wasn't a big deal. Anyway, um, but for homeschooling, a new homeschooler, and I wanted to do all the holidays because it really gave us something to look forward to, right? So I cut out hearts and we decorated, I think February 1st, we decorated for Valentine's and I had all sorts of grand ideas. And my friend said on Valentine's day, when she was a child, she made a Valentine for her dad. And when she got home, he was gone. Oh wow! He left their family mm -hmm. on Valentine's day. So she said to me from that point on, she never wanted to celebrate Valentine's day. Mm -hmm. And she had come to my house and saw just the little decorations and said, you know what? I want my kids to have these memories just because this really awful thing happened to me. Um, I can still redeem this for them. Mm -hmm. So she did start doing things for Valentine's day. And then that helped her actually to kind of move past that um, and not move past it because that pain will always be there. Um, but she was old enough and mature enough to say, can I do something special for my children mm -hmm. to make this a special time for them? So I think, um, all of us have, I had, I, I know a sweet couple, they're older. Um, he lost two brothers in tragic accidents, different years, right at Christmas. Mm. They don't, they don't decorate for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know what? Again, that isn't what Christmas is about, right? So they own a, a Christian bookstore and they always decorated that to the hilt. But mm -hmm. at home, they didn't do Christmas the same way as everybody else. Oh, interesting. It was just, just too, too painful. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I guess we have to decide at what point can I lay aside maybe my feelings that I've attached to this and do something for my children's sake to have something special? Or can we pivot and do something different? Because we still want to acknowledge that pain and that, that hurt. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have, do you have some thoughts about that, Sunny? Yeah, no, I, I think what you've said, yeah, is great. Um, and I know I experienced that growing up with Mother's Day because my grandmother passed away when my mom was only four. And so she had very um, negative feelings about Mother's Day. And I didn't even fully understand that until I was older, you know, would make the little Mother's Day cards and be all excited. And, you know, it, but it was very painful for me for her because she didn't really remember her own mother. Um, and so that's something that as I got older, I've seen how hard it is for her. Um, and so it's a day that my sister and I do not, like we thank her for being a, a wonderful mother, but we don't, you know, oh, happy mother, you know, turn it into a giant yeah. thing because it's hard for her. Yeah. Um, but as a young child, that was something that I didn't really see. Um, and so I think what you said about you know, doing things for your kids that they may or may not see. I think about really all the time things that we deal with as adult women that our kids are not always aware of. Um, but at the same time, if it is something super painful, like what you said, you know, maybe that's when you have that conversation, depending on the age or the maturity of your child um, or your spouse, you know, if, if it's not the same issue for them, because it's something that happened in your life, you know, maybe yeah. they can take on, some of the responsibility of that. I know uh, my husband and I take a team approach to basically everything, but if he sees that I'm personally struggling with something, he'll say, okay, what do you want me to do? Or what do you need me to do? And he'll kind of fill, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that I can't do. So I think yeah. don't, don't bottle it up and keep it inside, you know, but, but lean on whoever is in your support network. And, those yes. and of course, prayer, obviously. Yes is should be number one. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that would be my suggestion for that. I mean, fortunately in my own life, I haven't had a ton of tragedy surrounding the holidays. So that's, 
you know, not my own experience at this point, but I'm sure it's, at some point, you know, something could happen and that things always happen sure. you know, that we're not expecting. So yeah, relying on God to get through those times. And like what we've been saying all along is when you put the focus on other people, yeah, that it, it is easier, I think, to take that attention off of yourself and how you might be feeling at right. that time and being aware of other people who are struggling and might need you to be the one encouraging them or, you know, smiling at them, being friendly. I know retail workers during the holidays are, you know, mistreated all the time by all the crazy hectic shoppers. And so, you yeah. know, even if it's just thanking them, smiling, things like that, like I try to be as sweet as I possibly can to anyone this yeah. time of the year, especially um, for those reasons too. You know, something else I was thinking that just might make this holiday difficult is, um, with the economy the way it is, I sometimes feel sad. I think we we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to to spend money that maybe we don't have. And I don't think that that is helpful either. And I think sometimes we dream up in our mind what we think our kids are expecting and what they want. And, and we want to, you know, give that wow present so that they'll just be like and it that is not something that lasts right so i would just encourage any um any moms out there who are feeling that pressure of i have to spend this much i have to find that gift i have to do it look our kids are going to have disappointments all through their lives uh we can help if if we try to make everything perfect and wonderful for them all the time. There's also something they're not learning. So I think, um, especially this time of year, Christmas can be special. Spending time with them can be special. There's, there's just all, but in, at the end of the day, our family and our traditions and all of that don't meet the deepest needs of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we can, we know that God would not have us go into debt. Really, I mean, he, he says so much about that in scripture. And so I wouldn't, I, obviously most of us have to go into debt to buy a home, but he, he doesn't want us to be in debt. So I would just say, let me just encourage you if, if you're teetering on that, like, but I've got to give my kids this, it, it's okay. You, you don't you don't have to do that. You can make this special and love them, um, especially small children. Their expectations are so low. Uh, so anyway, I, I just don't know if anyone may would maybe be struggling with that. We're talking about pain at the holidays. People are losing jobs. People are out of work. People are um, struggling. And then you add the pressure of, I've got to make Christmas this wowza. <laughs> No, we need to take that pressure off of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so true. I love what you said about young kids. Their expectations are so low. I mean, if you think of a toddler, they open the gift and then they play with the box. They're not even into the, the present or even your own childhood memories. I remember places I went and things I did way more than I remember actual gifts I got. You know, there's, there's yeah. a very few small amount, birthdays, Christmas, all of it put together that I actually remembered stuff. It was who I was spending time with, what were we doing, where were we? Um, and so, yeah, I think enjoying those experiences together as a family, yeah. that's what your children will remember about Christmas was what what was the atmosphere? What did it feel like? Yeah. It, and you have the opportunity to create that culture. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I mean, some of us have these expectations of Christmas because that's the way it always was for us. Right. And so we have the opportunity to to change that. Like this is what our Christmas is about. Right. So, and, and anyway, you know, another thing I thought of is a lot of times this time of year, people have um, living nativities going mm -hmm. different churches, things like that. Um, when my kids were small, I think that's another thing. Just take advantage of one or two of those, right? Like, let's go to to this church's presentation or doing things like that. Those are some fun things that you don't have to spend money to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know now with social media and the internet, you can find all of the local mm. 
community activities so yep. quickly and easily. I know there's a um, Christmas light map of our town that's yeah. on it. And so you can see all the best Christmas lights or, yeah, awesome. like you said, different churches do different productions. I know ours has multiple services. And so that's always a big community event too, even for people who don't regularly attend there. Um, so yeah, look for those those free or inexpensive things that create fun memories. And then you get to take the lead. I love what you said about your creating the atmosphere of yep. what Christmas is going to be in your home. Um, and so take the lead. Do not feel guilty if it doesn't match what everyone else is doing. And yeah. I guarantee you half of those Pinterest photos are being shot with the pile of mess. Just push behind, <laughs> you know, the laundry or whatever, <laughs> whatever right. else is going on. Um, do you have anything else you would like to add before we close out today, Amber? I don't think so. I mean, well, I do one one thing. Sometimes we get comments, um, and I know I've I've gotten comments like this. Oh, you seem so patient. You seem so happy. You seem like everything. Yeah, it must be easy. It's it's not. Well, I'm saying this to you. It's a constant battle for me, even this year. So now I have three grown out of my house. Going, what am I going to get them for Christmas? What what present can I get? What do I just give them a gift card? That doesn't seem like enough. Like I mean. It's a, it is a battle. It can be a battle. And I think it's so interesting how we feel like we can, you know, come up and some of us are more about it, more about gifts and gift giving. That's really a, a love language for us. Other people, my husband could care less. And if you wrapped it up in a sock and just handed it to him, he, he'd just be like, okay, that's great. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't, it's okay. And he, he's all dollars and cents in his mind, like, oh my word, what are we saying? Um, <laughs> So don't buy me anything. Um, so being sensitive to that, but please know when Sunny and I are talking about this, that it's not like, oh yeah, and everything's beautiful and joyful. It's not, it's not. And I, it, even now am struggling like, okay, we've got to make some decisions. We've got to do at least a little something. And I don't know, but I want them to have something like, let's buy them tickets to this concert, for instance, but then they don't have anything to open. <laughs> well, so I'm just saying it's, it's, we don't have it all together. We're not presenting because we have all the answers and um, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, that is so true. That's, that's something that I try to get across. I don't know that it always does that. Yeah. We in here in the app, we're further down the road, but it doesn't mean that it is always perfect or we have it all figured out. And I think one of the things about homeschooling in general that it has taught me is to be flexible and to pivot and yes. change plans and things that, I mean, I told you I'm a type A perfectionist that fights every piece of my natural personality, not to plan for 10 years from now, but homeschooling and that time with my kids has taught me that that's not the way life works. That's not the way other people work. And, and you have to focus on the relationships with your family at the end of the day. That is one of my major motivators to keep homeschooling is because we are building that relationship so that hopefully when my kids grow up, we still communicate well and have good times together. And, and, you know, that's what I'm going for. And same thing with Christmas or any other celebration is, you know, what, how is this impacting the relationship I have with my kids? And is the house always clean? No. Are we eating at McDonald's sometimes? Yes. Like all of those things that you have to do as a busy mom. So yeah, I absolutely agree and echo everything you're saying. <laughs> here's, here's one more thought. Maybe you could poll your kids and say, what's one thing you hope we do this Christmas? Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you'd like to do? And you might have one little person say, please, can we make cutouts? Please, can we make gingerbread houses? Please, could we watch a Muppet Christmas Carol? Please, could we like, what's, what's one activity or one thing that they would really like to see happen? Because that's another thing. Like we might think, oh, they want all of this and they really don't. They just want this one little thing and you can, oh, that's all you want. Okay. Let's make that happen. So maybe even asking them what's, oh, I really want to go to the living nativity that we did last year. That was so cool. And so then you're like, okay, we can make that happen. So maybe even just ask them that question. Mm -hmm. uh, what could we, what's one thing, if you got to choose one Christmas activity, what would it be? Yeah. And maybe that'd be your guide. 
Yeah, I love that. I've heard people say things like that for like when you travel somewhere, asking everybody what they want to see or do. But I love that for the holidays. Like what makes it feel Christmas to you? And what we may think our kids are going to say may or may not be accurate. So that's something we always have like a little hot chocolate bar set up in our kitchen this time of the year with little toppings, you know, marshmallows and candy canes and stuff. And so that's something that the kids are like, it's not Christmas till the hot chocolate bar is set up. And so <laughs> we make sure that that is set up. Oh, wait, do you do that every day? No. So it's just oh. <laughs> that are full. <laughs> no, so I'm a big coffee drinker. And so we have like our little coffee set sure. up. And so I just have little canisters that are full of mini marshmallows sure. and peppermints and that type of stuff and then they've got the hot chocolate mix right there so nice. that's something that that we do um that's small and something i tried one year and it it took off so nice. yeah, i think pulling the kids what do they like to do you know asking your spouse what they like to do all of those things are are great yeah. suggestions and great ideas so we are running out of time so we are going to head out but amber thank you so much for being here, for being so festive. This is <laughs> so great. Yeah. And I, and I value everything you've said and appreciate it. There we go. <laughs> One more sip. Yeah. And for those of you that are watching, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to drop them in the comments in the replay. We will be posting this in the app so that you'll be able to go back and rewatch it. Um, so yeah, drop that there. If you need prayer or have any feedback on anything at all, let us know. We would love to hear from you. And Amber, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs>